gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is officially 9 a.m. on the dot and we are here at my race shop located in Southern Oregon. And today I would like to make some progress on this car sitting behind me. Right now it is currently a bare frame. We stripped it down a couple weeks ago. We are now gonna start putting it back together. This was for sure our best and most consistent car of the 2022 season. And if you have something like that in your operation where it just clicks, you don't wanna get rid of it. So we're gonna get started on putting it back together today and see how far we get. So for today, I wanted to start off on the simple side of things and kind of work my way from front to back. So we have our little blue bushings that go in the torsion rack, which allow us to slide the torsion bars in, just lightly tap them in. And now you can see the torsion bar, which I put a little bit of grease on, got the left front here. And then next we will slide the right front in and pull that through. It's really funny. This car specifically has this bar combination that it really likes and we really don't stray too far away from it. Even when we go to different size racetracks, uh, it really likes to live in this certain area and that just where it seems like it has its speed. And if we ever stray away from it, it's very easy for us to start slowing down and uh, just get off balance. But up next, I slid the front axle in the car and this is very, very simple. Basically, we just have all of our radius rods. You have two on the right side and then one on the left hook them all up and then you have your pan hard bar uh, that goes across the front which holds the front axle from going from side to side and then once you get that uh, on blocks then i was able to put uh, my front torsion arms on and then my stops and kind of just put it where i wanted so it sits in the shop properly well i decided to get one of the easier parts of the car done first we got the front axle in got our torsion bars in and our torsion arms on now the nice thing about what we are doing today is since this race car has already been together before it's been on track, it makes this part of the process and putting it together so much easier. When you have a brand new car with all brand new components and you're trying to build everything to the correct length, it just takes more time. Now I should mention we are still doing our due diligence though. We're going to make sure every radius rod length is correct, the front axle's in the right spot, the rear end is square. Now we easily could just slap it all together and say, hey, I, I think it's close or I think everything's tight or there's no reason to double check. That's that's dumb, uh, but that's just not how we do it here with our family operation. Myself, my dad, Carly, our family, we try to do everything we do the right way, and it's worth taking a little extra time to make sure that everything is correct. So now we are moving from the front of the race car to the cockpit area and kind of down by my feet. Got my floor pan here, which is very easy just to slide in and then kind of slide underneath, and then I work on bolting that down. After the floor pan is in, then I can move on to the motor plate, which is very important to get on here early in the process. That's like a center piece of the car. And then from there, I was able to get the torque ball attached to the housing and get all that tightened up. And then I worked on getting the brake pedal in, the gas pedal in, and then some of the fuel system in there as well, kind of just in that general area. And then my dad showed up to the shop because he had to help me get my rear end fixed before I could put it back in the car. It just slides in like that. Like so my dad got back to the shop and we are fixing my small mistake from when I tore this car apart where the coupler came off the rear end and then rear end oil went all over the shop floor. Loctite for bearings. I guess we don't need that much. I'm not the only one who makes messes in the shop. I don't know, never used this stuff before. You have, wait, we have it? No. Nope. Oh, because I guess we've never had this problem. There it goes. So that is all good now. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, into the future, we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on this rear end and make sure it doesn't happen again. I think what's causing it is the grease we use. This is called Neo Grease and it's so sticky and the quality is, is so good uh, on our drive shafts that literally like it just gets stuck in the rear end and you can't pull it apart, especially if you're like me and probably put a little too much on. So the next step was to get the master cylinder in for the brakes, and then I wanted to slide the rear end in the car, which I got a little neo grease here, making sure that's all gonna be greased up where the drive line's gonna slide in. And then this part was kinda awkward. You can definitely put it in by yourself. It's just a little weird to kinda get it in the car, not having someone on the other side. Rear end is in the car. Well, we made it a little farther along, got the torque tube, drive shaft, and rear end in. And I'm not gonna lie, that actually feels really good. This is 
semi starting to look like a sprint car. Once I got all this in down here, I wanted to move to the cockpit, but unfortunately I don't have a seat at my race shop right now because I have two custom Butler built. One is in the midget that I'm gonna be driving for Chili Bowl, and the other one is in my backup car, which is still upstairs in my trailer. And I wanna be careful to do too much in this area because I almost have to start taking it apart once I need to put the seat in because we have the halo, so it can't go in through the top, which means it's gotta go in through the side. And even once you start putting some of the little components on, like the shifter cable, like I mentioned, the steering box, the knee guard, like. As you build the car more and more, you gotta start taking it apart to get it in. So uh, I feel like this was really good progress for the day, especially since this thing started as a bare frame and all the work was done myself. And then of course, a little help from my dad on that rear end, which I really appreciated because I, I needed that. Anyway, that's gonna probably conclude this day of work. I now wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, the Ridge Wallet. So the Ridge Wallet is perfect for a race car driver like you or me that is spending all their weekends at a dirt track and constantly pulling this thing in and out of our pocket. Because whether we're getting pit passes, we're going and buying spare parts, or we're going to the concession stand, we are constantly pulling money in and out of our wallet, and then hopefully at the end of the night, we're gonna have a pretty big check in Victory Lane that we can put back in. And that is one of the great things about it. It's small, it fits right in your pocket, and therefore it's easy to keep track of. Now the Ridge also offers matching key cases to the wallet if you wanna keep track of your keys and kinda of have both of them live together. Now if you're interested in purchasing these items, you need to act now. You can get the best deal over at the ridge.com slash 18T. That's ridge.com slash 18T. Check out their huge selection of all the items, different colors, all the choices that they offer, and you can get 40% off through my link down below until December 22nd. So thank you to The Ridge for sponsoring today's video. It is now the next day, and we are about to continue work on the 18T. So now I'm working towards the direction of getting the rear end squared, so I'm putting everything on and around it. We got our bird cages, rear arms, radius rods, so then once we get it in the correct spot, we can just hook it all up. Squaring the rear end is the process of measuring from the front of the motor plate to the center of the rear axle. Now on my car, this has to be 39 and an eighth because I run an 87, 40 and a half and we also have the rear end on blocks to simulate where it sits on the ground. So everything has to be perfect for this process and sometimes it takes a lot of time. Good? Yeah. All right, so dad just helped me get the rear end square. So now the next part is you gotta hook it all up and if you had other people in your shop with you, you gotta make sure no one walks too close to the car and, and hits literally anything. The rear end moves, it's not gonna be in the right spot. So now that that is all complete, and I won't lie, my dad and I have actually gotten pretty quick at getting the rear end close and then just like fine tuning uh, to get to the exact measurement. Now it was all time to hook everything up with our rear arms, radius rods, get the bird cages in the right position, and then last but not least, hook up the Jacob's ladder. Well, I got a pretty solid smile on my face because another part of the building process is done. I figured in the video I would mention three key things that are worth noting when squaring a rear end that you just, you gotta make sure are done or if they get forgotten about or neglected, things could go south. The first one being you gotta have some assortment of spacers or something to hold your bird cages all the way in past the splines. Otherwise, as you're connecting and disconnecting things, like they can just easily slide off and once they slide off, it's really hard to get them back on, especially if everything's already together. So that is a must and even if you're changing bars at the racetrack or you're doing something in this area of the car, it's just smart to do because like I said, if those slide off, it's really hard to get everything back together and where it needs to be. And the second one being, and this is just my personal opinion, Opinion. But you have the bolt here that goes in the bird cage that holds the rear arm. There's a little Allen that screws into the side here, and its job is to eliminate the chance of this bolt backing out. Because obviously, if that happened, then you'd lose your rear arm, and I can only imagine what would continue to kind of domino effect from it. And last, and this is just how we like to do it at THR to make our lives a little bit easier. We clamp some sort of straight edge to this side of the motor plate. And then when you're measuring, you're not questioning the exact mark you're trying to get to. You have the straight edge, you can have the tape measure and run it right over it and look directly down and you can see if you're off and if you need to go forward or back or if you're right on the money. So those are my three key things I figured I would mention. Like I said, just my personal opinion and to each their own on how everyone does it. There's a million different ways to make a race car go fast and put it together. It's just all on your personal preference and how you would like to go about it. With all that being said though, this car was a bare frame at the beginning of the week. And with a little bit of work, we got this thing moving right along. Anyway, that is gonna end today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna try to finish this thing up. I think next week will be the goal. And then we'll talk about what other equipment we gotta deal with this off season and build and regroup to get things ready for a big 2023. 
See you guys in the next one. Peace.